everybody, Lori Gilbert here with Lori Gilbert Art coming at you with another tutorial. I did a poll on Instagram and it was like 95% of you wanted to do light rays this time. So that is my personal preference. I love doing sunsets, light rays, anything like that. It just has this really magical feeling. So this time I decided to do a forest. And what's cool about this is you can actually use this effect on any type of light scene. So if you're doing clouds with light coming through, um, coming around a building. I actually use the same method and color palette for most of those. So I'm hoping you can use this and apply to any type of sunset and landscape scene you want to. Anyways, all the good stuff. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, tag me on Instagram on any paintings you do from this. It was, it was really cool. I didn't really think about how exciting that would be. I did the cloud tutorial the last time and people tagged me and what they did from it saying, you know, thank you so much. Like this is what I learned and like, I don't know. It just made me super happy because painting for me has changed my whole life. So the fact that I can inspire anybody to sit down and take the time to do that in the first place, much less learn new techniques is very, very rewarding to say the least. Can't quite articulate that well enough. I'll probably tear up and be like a weird artist on here. So I won't. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoy what I did and please give me suggestions on what you want to learn next or ways to improve this video. Um, I'm not an expert when it comes to this, so I'm always open to feedback and I hope you enjoy what I did. All right, so I'm starting off with the background color, which is Prussian blue, cadmium red, and my favorite color, hooker's green. I use just a little bit of the green in here because it's going to be that kind of magical little swamp scene. So I wanted the color to just be a little bit tinted to the cool color, cool side. But um, just kind of a, a side note, cadmium red and Prussian blue is my absolute favorite dark mix. So anytime in a landscape you have like the darkest shadow, it looks black. Use this mix because it's just like a richer, richer, darker color. Black just comes out a little bit flat and a little bit green. So I use the ruler to create just a little bit of the horizon line. I guess that's a horizon line. It's where the water meets the, the landscape. And it's just to kind of block in the landscape. I get a lot of people asking me how I kind of trace out my compositions. And usually it's something like that where I just kind of get a gauge for where things go. And when I blurred my eyes at the image, this is kind of what the background looks like to me. Like it was dark on the bottom and then it had kind of like a lighter blue background. So for the upper background, I am using light blue permanent, hooker's green, and titanium white. You'll see it's this really nice seafoam color. So I chose that color because I was picturing the, the trees having a little bit of space in between them, and I wanted it to be this I don't know, like it's in the middle of the day and you're in this swampy land and a little bit of the sky is coming through and it's like that kind of eerie green sky. I don't know, that was kind of what was in my head. So I just blurred, using a little bit of water, I just blurred that little line. Here I am using my magical hair dryer. <laughs> I always like to perfectly dry the layers in between um, just to keep working. No, I don't use any mediums. It's just water. I use a little bit more water on the background just to spread the color. So this fancy tool is my ruler again. Um, those are the trees I'm blocking in. So even with trees, I like having a straight line to just use it as a baseline. Now they're structured pretty ver vertically, obviously, but when I go to paint, I kind of paint out the trunk just a little bit maybe create just a little bit of knot holes. You'll see I have the little bend at the top just to kind of give the illusion that it's a little bit more organic of a shape yet having the structure of those perfectly vertical lines because I know trees kind of grow sometimes sporadically and or fall, but for this instance, I liked having them very structured. I forget what those are called. I think they're birch, I forget. So I'm using that same background mix. It's the Prussian blue, cadmium red, and a little bit of the hooker's green. I use a straight brush, it's a straight angle brush, and you'll see to the left I outline the edges of the trees and then I'm going to go back and fill in the center. And I feel like this just gives you better control. You know, when you load up the brush too much, if it's a thicker, thicker object, I feel like you kind of lose a little bit of control and 
you know, when I set them up this way, I can kind of angle out the little areas or like draw a little knot hole if I want to. So I'm just filling in the areas, kind of being loose about it. I have my reference for about where the trees want to go, but I did change it up. You know, that's the best part about doing landscapes is you, it's really hard to screw up proportions and stuff. You know, as long as you have the structure in the background, the important things like a straight horizon line, you can kind of do whatever you want to. So here I'm using yellow light. I think that was Prussian blue, cadmium red, and again, a little bit of that hooker's green. And I'm trying to figure out the upper tree mix with this. So I like using the Prussian blue and just a little dad of the cadmium red. That creates a little bit of a neutral color in the trees. And I added just a little hint of the titanium white. So I found, especially in nature, you know, unless you're doing a super bright flower, you don't want it to be this overly saturated color. And since this is kind of a swampy, murky scene, I wanted the trees to be green. But do you see how that little dab of cadmium red really toned down that green color quite a bit? So you'll see that's a staple in my palette, even with cool colors like that, because it just... I don't know, it just neutralizes it just that amount. So I'm using a medium sized fan brush. I'll post which ones I use in the description. But this has a pretty wide angle and you'll see when I'm using it horizontally, I'm just dabbing it right in. You can also use a fan brush vertically. So you see those tree trunks, I'm actually still using the same brush, so it's pretty versatile. I'm kind of just, I don't know, making up some background stuff here. So a big tip of the day is anytime you're trying to make the illusion of having a landscape be dimensional, meaning, you know, things in the background versus foreground, see how that color on the total left side is very, very white. So I took that mix and added more blue and more white to it. And that always gives the illusion that things are in the background. So like if you're doing a mountain scene, if you add a lot of blue and a lot of white to an area, it, it pushes them into the background. In the foreground, those trees are the darkest values. That makes them look like they're in the foreground. So it's just a little tip I've noticed about landscapes. So here I'm using my Simply Simmons um, Filbert brush. I believe this is eight. And I'm literally just scrubbing in the background color. And I wanted to do this just kind of as a baseline. So you can see like the, the swampy kind of background area. And I'd call this the, the middle ground. And right here I'm actually mixing in just a little bit of that cadmium yellow light, tiny bit of cadmium red and, and titanium white. And I'm scrubbing this in as if, you know, the sunlight is kind of trying to break through the top of those trees. And this gives another illusion of having some depth. And you can start to see my painting kind of starting to take form. Like, you know, it's, it's foggy back there and, and some lighting's kind of pouring through. And it's starting to give it just a little bit more, more life to it. It's so tempting for me to start talking like Bob Ross and say, look at all my happy little trees. <laughs> So here's the really important part about painting light rays. Always, always, always start with as opaque white as an area as possible. I was a little annoyed with how close this was to the stand because I needed to get up in that top right corner, so bear with me. <laughs> I'm figuring this out as I go. So Anytime you're using, especially acrylics, white is never totally, totally opaque. So I usually end up going over where there's sun rays a few different times. So I back paint, under paint, I think that's what that's called, with the white. And I'm trying to figure out here where to put the sun rays. So you have to think of it like perspective lines, and that's why I like using the ruler, because light travels in a straight line. I'm sure there's some magical physics explanation that I'm not intelligent enough to dictate right now. Um, 
so right here you'll see that anytime you have a sun it's a central you know omni glow right it's coming omni means one is coming from one focal point so I usually kind of pretend there's a dot in the middle where that sun is and set the ruler up and it kind of fucked up with the red right there but it see happy little accidents you just paint right over it and it's just fine so don't be scared anyways I pretend there's a focal point you know where the sun would be and I angle that ruler out from that and that gives that kind of sun ray illusion and it doesn't have to be perfect you can tell that I'm just a little bit off on that top line but as long as you have that as a baseline you know your eyes will kind of correct it if it's too far off it'll look wrong <laughs> That's about as scientific as I go, but you can see where you know, in that top right corner, you can see where I keep lining up um, that ruler. I put those dots on the left hand side because I kind of wanted that where the sun rays were going to end. So this works anytime you have any type of light sources. So think of this like as if those tree branches were clouds. You can do the same exact process when you're doing a landscape with um, clouds in it or a seascape with fluffy clouds think of it the same thing find where the sun source is coming from it can be off the page use a ruler and just paint out the light rays and you know if you have a cloud you can kind of brush it underneath where it might be bursting through and just look at references you can kind of pick up how the natural world works just by looking at all these beautiful photos people post it's pretty magical so I'm just filling in with titanium white. I'm using a flat angle brush, hair dryer in between. I do this just, again, I like having all my layers dry in between, just because when I do that dry brushing method, that scrubbing, unless I'm blending in the background where I really want it to be muted, I like each layer to be perfectly crisp. You know, if you're having a, a sunset where it's getting all muddy, you're not letting it dry enough because the it'll create a green if you combine the yellow and orange and blues together. So here I wanted to create a glow. So I'm actually using cadmium red light, just a dab. Cadmium yellow light. Actually it might just be yellow light. I'll post it. And then obviously titanium white. So this creates this very, very nice coral warm color like the light is just kind of kissing all these little edges of the fog and the trees and it is a really nice juxtaposition against that cool background and you'll see that with this color palette that corally color is a perfect complement to that seafoam green background color I kind of do this naturally I don't realize it until I do a voiceover or something like this why that works but it it creates this nice pop, but it still ties in together really nicely. So I'm using that Simply Simmons brush just to really scrub in that color. You can see I'm barely using any water here. It's like tiny little dabs. And I keep a paper towel right off screen. And anytime I actually do dip any water in it, I do wipe it off and get off any excess. So here I'm just scrubbing right along the lines, the edges of the white lines, and blurring them just a little bit using my spit, which is probably, again, I'm going to say this every video, it's super gross. I don't realize how, how much I do that until I watch these. It's disgusting. Don't do that. It's probably really unhealthy. Um, but yeah, I use this, this brush to scrub in the edges. So it, it gives the illusion that it's light and kind of, you know, lightweight but still follows that guideline I had in and don't worry about those background lines showing I think in the end I kind of scrub back over the background color and go back in between and just kind of lighten the load a little bit and they, they fade out pretty nicely so I'm going back and forth I'm adding just a little bit more white to that original mix in certain areas you'll see in that top Sunray where there's a little bit denser of a color like right there I used a little bit more white just to kind of give it the illusion like it's hitting maybe some smoke I decided to brush it back in that top area Just in certain little parts like you know There's some so many dense trees back there that it, it's just kind of lightly popping through and by using the scrubby brush You'll see I'm kind of scrubbing it 
different areas there too. So I'm using that mix just again with more white. And I'm leaving it very dry. Sorry my head's getting in the way there. Obviously I figured it out. <laughs> Listen guys, I'm trying real hard to be professional here, but to give you a little bit of time to figure out the format on these, um, I kind of get into the little mode and forget that I'm recording. But So I'm using this ruler as a guide and hardly having any paint on that top area. And that's how you get that super transparent vibe. So here I'm just using plain white. Again, just as the closer I get to that light source, the whiter that gets. And it creates that little bit of luminosity. Here I just added some water to that original mix. So this is usually what I do when I'm doing light sources. I go back through with white and I touch up the areas that I want the brightest. So where I think that light source is going to be hitting the hardest, I go back in with pure white and make it super, super opaque. And this is really what gives that illusion of having this light, light bursting through something because when it gets close to the light source, it almost, you know, blows out any, any objects and anything and it is the dominant, dominant thing in the painting. So I'm going back in now with my favorite dark mix, Prussian blue and cadmium red, a little bit of hooker's green. And I'm just painting back in, now that I got the sun rays in the background, the, those foreground trees that I want popping forward. And you'll see instantly, you know, when I put these trees back in, how much more dimension now this painting gets. So never be afraid to draw something in and then, you know, like I'm always scrubbing color over things and then going back in and painting it again. Uh, especially with acrylics versus oils, I get asked why I use acrylics over oils all the time. And I know that oils don't always have a build to them, but the couple times I did use oils, I just didn't like the ridges and all the volume it created because I do so many layers that I love how acrylics, no matter, you can do 100 layers and it still is flat. So now I'm using my little tiny nub brush. <laughs> this thing is literally runs my life for detail. And I mixed in Hooker's Green, Prussian Blue, Cadmium Red, and just a little bit of that yellow light and white to get this nice, it's basically that background color with a little bit more Prussian Blue and Cadmium Red in it. And this is the, I think the most difficult part of the painting is lightly scrubbing in those mid mid tone trees. And I wanted the effect that it was kind of right in the middle of those two sun rays and kind of breaking through. So I'm using that same color to kind of create, you know, as if there's like beautiful willow trees kind of hanging down from the top. And again, anything that kind of reinforces that little bit of that whimsical feeling. So I decided to add in another little middle middle tree, you know, I realize now when you when you add these in in the middle of the sun rays like they're just breaking through it really is what adds in that little magical lighting element and it makes you want to just kind of get in the middle of, of this painting and kind of sit right there and just pretend you're being quiet with your little fairies or something dancing around you. So the key to getting this color right is really just making sure it has enough white in it so Usually what I'll do is, you know, I start kind of getting a palette together where I know the background is going to be, you know, this amount of blue and this amount of white. The foreground is going to be this amount of hooker's green in the Prussian. And the mid-tone is just going to be adding some white. And you start getting a consistency in how you mix. And so automatically when you want to add something in the middle, you know what that color mix is. So here is, <laughs> I always call these the most magical things in the world are these poopy neutral colors. So anytime you have a warm light source and a really, really dark, cool background, the key to having realism is having this really nice neutral color. So that 
yeah, it's it's really just like weird poop barf color. <laughs> like I don't know how else to describe it. But that color is cadmium red light and cadmium actually sorry, cadmium red light, little bit of yellow light. And I kept adding dabs of Prussian blue and white until it came out with that weird neutral color. And I'm using just this really fluffy brush to blend it. And from here I added a little bit more blue and white to my scrub. And I'm just kind of scrubbing that in like it's fog. And so this is mainly dry brushing. So I have barely any water on this brush and I'm just scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. And that's almost all just titanium white. And so you can do this with the Simply Simmons brushes too as well. And what you do is literally just take the paint, add just a tiny bit of water on it, scrub it on your plate, and then wipe it off on your paper towel. And then scrub it into the canvas and keep layering and layering. It's always nice to start off more transparent and keep building layers for fog. So here's kind of the secret sauce. So this is one of my favorite ways to add a glow is having cadmium red light and yellow light mixed in with a lot of white. And I scrub it on top of that transparent mixing white. And you can see I'm not putting it everywhere. I'm still keeping that center glow perfectly white. But if you put it onto the edges of all of those sun rays, it starts to create that luminosity. So the other thing that people don't realize with these type of sun rays, and it definitely in a darker background, is once you put in the sun rays, paint in the darker neutral color around them, and it really starts to make them pop. So you can tell that I added in that neutral color. I'm trying to mix in kind of, now this looks more like barf. <laughs> Sorry, I'm super immature, but whatever. So that's the red light, yellow light, Prussian blue, and a tiny bit of cadmium red and white to create this nice neutral color. And I'm just using that little fluffy brush and fanning out that color into the tips. And so you'll start to see that the edges of those light rays start to kind of fade into the background. So I keep going through using that neutral color, handy dandy blow dryer. Now I'm generating a new palette probably because my other one got pretty tainted. Whenever you're using white it gets tainted very easily. So I'm just using a tiny 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 bit of cadmium yellow light in white and I'm just lightly scrubbing that color along the edges at the brightest areas. So you can see I'm just using it on the very tips right in that center focal point and I'm fading it into the white and this is what creates a really nice glow. And so even here, I think of it like a gradient. You have that darker orange on the outside and then you're blending in this yellow light mix along the corners. And I blend back in plain titanium white to just keep that glow going. Blending in along the corners. And now I'm using that kind of gold color. It's like the yellow light and white. And I'm going through, you know, the middle parts of where those light rays are coming in and wanting to, them to be, it's kind of like the fog is hitting certain areas and highlighting them. And here I go back in with that Simply Simmons brush with a little bit of red light, a little bit of cadmium yellow, and I'm just scrubbing it along those edges now to really create an effect like it's a, a smoky light ray area. And here you can kind of scrub it in the background different areas like as if some trees are kind of shielding a couple little areas where the light's coming in. So I wanted this to be a little bit brighter so I'm still using cadmium red light, yellow light, and white. 
and I just wanted this to have a bit more of a pop of an orange so I left that pretty saturated and added a little bit more white if I wanted it to kind of blend in and carry it around the edges. So it's really important to use the same mixes sometimes and just add variants, you know, add more white and then blend it in and go back in. I think that's a lot of the time the, the blending step people forget. So I'm going back in with a flap, the <laughs> flappy brush, fluffy brush, and with hardly any water on it, I'm just lightly scrubbing in that titanium white pure because it's so transparent, even though it's supposed to be opaque, I'm just kind of lightly touching all these different little areas with it. And there's a couple little dark areas. I added just a little bit of the yellow light and white again, and you can see I'm just going back and forth with those two little palettes and seeing you know, what I need to do to make it feel fluid. I'm adding just a little bit of a gold mix that's on my plate from those three colors into the bottom edges. And here comes that really wonderful weird barfy color. Um, I always keep my other plates there. Um, I usually have like three plates per painting and that allows me to never waste any. You know, I'll go back in and use that Prussian blue and cadmium red from the other and, and mix it in. So again, this neutral color um, is again the same mix we used before. If it's more green, it just means that I'm adding a little bit more of that Prussian blue in there to deepen it. And sometimes I'll add in cadmium red really dampens a color. You know, like cadmium red light makes it this fresh kind of brighter color. Cadmium red medium actually really creates more of a denser color. So I usually will use that for landscape mixes. It, it really bodes well. So it makes sense. Think of that for palettes, cadmium red light for light, and then for landscapes and almost everything else, use cadmium red medium. So I took that darker color um, and am brushing it back over. I decided to bring a couple of these little trees forward over the sun rays. And again, even if you don't like it, you can push them back, but Never be scared to kind of go back and forth with having these things weave in, but this starts to give the effect that these sun rays are just bursting through on a lateral level through all of the forest. So I'm using that little nubby brush and just, I kind of make sure the edges are just a little fluffy. I'm drying it down. So once those are dry, I'm going to now take a little bit of the yellow light and white and just very, 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 very slightly scrub over the trees. And this really starts to give the effect that that sun, sunlight's kind of wrapping around them. So you can still see them, but it just lightly is grazing around the front side of them. Sorry, obviously I'm ADD and have to switch songs every two seconds on my phone. I hope it's not too distracting. So here I'm just taking a little bit of that orange and yellow mix that I was already using and using my fluffy brush just to fan out the edges to blend it in. And you can keep going back and forth now that you have all this, these color combinations. You know, I tried to do this in one stint, so I wasn't blending that background neutral color and probably as smooth as I probably could. It still turned out all right, but you know, if you want to spend more time going through all these. Added just a little bit more of the orange, so any type I'm using the orange, anytime I'm using the orange, I'm using that red light and yellow light. And here I mixed up that original tree color and I'm using that wide fan brush to just go through and dab over the trees. And this gives the effect, I'm using that fan brush vertically a little bit, and this gives the effect that now those tree branches are hanging over in front of that sunlight. So you can see it's a little bit of a darker green color. It's Prussian blue, cadmium yellow light, and a little bit of cadmium red to create that dark color. And now it looks like those tree branches are in front. So I'm using a smaller fan brush 
and I'm using that original orange yellow mix to make these little flowers using all the same color palette now to just tie it all in and those fan brushes are pretty amazing for creating little vegetation using them vertically in certain places so that lighter green color just has more cadmium yellow light in it, and I add just a tiny bit of white. So I took some of that, that neutral orange color, added some flowers with that color, and here I'm trying to find like a nicer, brighter green. I think I wanted it to feel more like an electric swamp, not quite sure, but I used just um, a little bit of Prussian blue and cadmium yellow light and a lot more white. And here's where I kind of started having fun. I just added some water into the mix. I was using the vertical fan brush just to kind of dab in, you know, some elements. And here I'm just using a lot of water to kind of let it drip and make it feel like water. You can just kind of have fun with it. So the important thing is anytime you're doing reflections, whatever you do on the top, you do right below it. So I put it on its side, see so it let it drip down. It's kind of, that was like, I don't know, it's my fun free part. So because it's water, I wanted it to run, you know, left to right and added a little bit of splatters. And here I wanted to show you just a little bit of how I did the detail. So I wanted these little magical fairy things. <laughs> so I'm using, Here's the Prussian blue and cadmium red, and I just kind of drew in the bank a little bit darker to just kind of give a little bit more of effect that, you know, there was a bank there. So I added in that darker background color just at the base of the plants, like where the shadow of them would be. Just blended it in, bl blended in just a little bit of that shadow. Decided to darken that. So here's where I kind of had some fun. I'm taking this little brush, adding just a little bit of the yellow oxide to tint it with a lot of white. And I like to just dab in these little fairy elements. And I'm just using a little brush and dotting in like there's little fairies hanging out in the trees and floating around. And, you know, let's pretend like they're little orbs or something like that. I was doing a little Instagram post. So I keep going in with those little tiny dots and it just adds the littlest bit of attention on the foreground to brighten it up. And I kind of thought about it later why I do this is because it counterbalances the brightness of that top right corner. So again, anything I do above that line, I do below the line and act like a reflection. So sometimes I'll just you know, do a line at the top, do a line at the bottom. You can see me going back and forth. So if you ever want to just like study lakes, you know, look at the way reflections work, it's kind of fun to translate that into something abstract. Here I'm using a smaller fan brush just to kind of create a little bit more vegetation. I stroke it up, do the same thing right below, stroke it up, same thing below. And that's why fan brushes are so fun. You can make grass by just flicking it up and vice versa. Or you can put it on its side to create kind of these vertical little dots. So now I'm brushing back in that orange color to just create a little bit of variation. Sprinkling it in and from here you can just kind of do it intuitively. You can see my blow dryer kind of took away those dots but I liked the way that turned out. I kind of liked them feeling all funky. So here's the fun part. I'm using just a little bit of that background seafoam color with white and I'm taking that that fluffy brush I have and just scrubbing in that mix. So you can use pure white. It doesn't really make a difference to have it slightly tinted blue in my opinion, but um, I'm just really scrubbing using hardly any water in this and adding in wherever I felt like I wanted that fog to kind of roll in. I wanted it to feel like it's coming down through the trees like some kind of vampire movie. <laughs> so I'm just kind of playing around here. I really wanted that fog to kind of be like you're hanging out in a swamp and it's swooping in. So I'm using just that fluffy brush with plain white here and playing with it. I'm letting it climb up the trees a little bit. 
and that's pretty much it. You can just have fun with it. I encourage you to just be loose and feel free and picture your favorite movie and try to create that feeling. I do that a lot. So to top this off, I just wanted to add a couple more of these little sparkly dots. I loaded up my little brush, made sure they reflected, and that's all this painting had in it. So I hope you enjoyed this and learned about some sun rays and palettes. So there you have it. There is your sun ray, smoky, magical, little fairy forest, whatever you want to call it, I didn't name it yet, tutorial. Um, please again tag me if you followed along and want me to share on my Instagram any progress from you. And thank you again for all the support and I hope you have a very creative day.